Great. Okay, Brenda, when she leads, what is it? What are, what are you all about? <laughs> <laughs> so we started this, um, I guess, uh, initiative within CGN called When She Leads. And um, one of the things that we saw, like you were saying, it starts with a burden. And I have a burden for women in ministry, not only the pastor's wife, the assistant pastor's wife, but then um, those that are in administration, those that are in church law, those that are serving in children's ministry, leading worship teams, like there are high level leaders mm -hmm. and, and servants within the church that we, we work in this together, right? Yeah. Men and women. Um, and we're complementarian in nature. So we believe that women can do a lot in the church except for be an elder. Um, and mm -hmm. so within that context, we just have this burden for women who are unsupported. And so we just thought, and God had put this vision on my heart years and years and years ago, and I thought he was gonna do it a different way, um, but just to be a, a leader of leaders and to, so started with that burden and we just want to have women come alongside women, help equip them, help connect them one to another because I think we need a community as well. And it's great to integrate, but we, just like you guys need another man to go to, we mm -hmm. need other women to mm -hmm. go to that yeah. understand what it is to be married to a man in ministry, what it is to be a single woman in ministry, what it is to be a woman who maybe is married to an unsaved man, but in ministry, maybe one that's not involved in ministry, yeah. all these different things. So we want to come alongside, we want to equip women because we believe too that the more we're equipped by the word of God, the not the easier that ministry is going to be but the we're going to do it the way jesus did it mm -hmm. yep. and that's our that's our north star we want to do uh um, we want to do ministry biblically we want to do it according to the word of god and so we want to equip women we want to connect women with one another for community and then we just want to be there to support pray for and just build that community of, of women. Um, and, you know, I, I like to say that, you know, CGN is a network not only for men, it's for women <laughs> yeah. too. It's not a boys club yeah, where we're trying. Yeah, <laughs> we're trying, yeah, not we're anymore. Here. <laughs> yeah, we're not and, going anywhere. Uh, You've always been here. It's just now there's a place at the table. There's a, there's yes. a bigger uh, involvement. Yeah, and I think women are scared of, of that. So I think we need to be clear this is not women's lib, like, move over, Are you over, guys trying man. to take over? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is this feminism? <laughs> uh, God forbid. <laughs> um, no, uh, but we're in ministry together, and there's so much that, that we do. We're a body. We're a family. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. moms, there's dads, there's uncles, there's cousins. We all work together, just like the family works. Yeah, a lot of churches um, neglect the importance of women in leadership and in ministry, some overemphasize it and we you know we joke around is this feminism whatever um but that's that's a, a um a problem that can happen too where it's kind of flipped the pendulum swings mm -hmm. what would you say i mean as far as uh women in ministry women in leadership um and i was thinking about this like my wife lynn she's and you guys know her and she's awesome um she awesome yeah just in case you're listening you're awesome <laughs> lynn we love you we lynn. love you, we love you. You're awesome Yep. And, but I was thinking, you know, as we were, uh, I was thinking about this, um, podcast episode, um, what, what, what is it that our church would be missing if it wasn't for Lynn or for our women, mm -hmm. for our leader, women leaders, what would the church be lacking? And yeah. my, I would like to hear what you have to say, but my conclusion was the church probably wouldn't be here mm -hmm. if it wasn't for, or for it'd sure. be really, you know, malnourished, I guess you could say unhealthy. I, I would agree with a lot of that. And I, my husband, Kyle would too. He tells me a lot. He's like, we couldn't do this, our mm -hmm. church, Calvary Bling without the women. Um, you know, it, we're needed. You know, I shared how Calvary Bling started and I don't know how that is with everybody, but I know in our church in Calvary Bling, the ministries are strong because a lot of them are led by women. And Kyle g gave our, um, a lot of liberty in that mm -hmm. and he supported it 
you know, and yeah. they're working in their giftings. And because these women are allowed to work in their giftings, these things are just exploding and they're exciting. Yeah. And, you know, some of the women that just kind of wondered, you know, Calvary Chapel in Brazil, like especially in our, the state we live in, um, nobody knows about it. Nobody understands. It's not like here in the States where everybody has heard of it. They don't even know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of questions. And one of the questions is, you know, are women allowed to teach? What's going on? Why don't I ever see you, Chris, up there mm -hmm. teaching yeah, on a yeah. Sunday? And I explained to them, you know, the, the view we have. And then I asked them, though, I'm like, do you ever do you feel like left out? Do you feel like there's something you can't do in our church? And all of them have said no. I'm like, yeah. do you feel supported? You know, is Kyle, you know, and the rest of the, you know, the leadership, are they supporting you and your gifting? And they're like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm like, so, and so there's no, they're not feeling like they're missing anything. Well, that's, that brings me to an important point, especially within Calvary Chapel, because I've been part of Calvary Chapel for a long time. And um, it's almost like, especially for pastor's wives, if we're talking about women in ministry, for pastor's wives especially, it's like, okay, he's the senior pastor, he's the head of the church, you know, he does all the ministry and vision and everything. And then the pastor's wife job is, you know, to do uh, women's ministry right. and uh, children's, <laughs> children's ministry and play the piano. Right. And, um, but I mean, what, what are you hoping to see change um, from that kind of mentality to, all right, because what if Krista's not gifted to do women's, I don't know if you are or not, but if, what if she's she not gifted is. to, she is, uh, to do women's ministry yeah. or any of these other things, or even to do ministry within that local church at all. Maybe it's some parachurch group that's, you know, right. working on stuff. Well, I mean, how are we working to, to change the mentality, to enable women to have more of a role in leadership and, and in the church? I, I think to go back to your first question, what would we be missing? Half the church. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, yeah. statistically, at least 50% or 60% of the church are women. Um, to your second point, I think that we all have a lot of work to do. This isn't just the men need to get on board with this. <laughs> like, I think uh, we as uh, women, we have work to do too. I, th I think we all have to intentionally take a look at this and go, how can we biblically and healthily get this right? Mm -hmm. um, not just based on tradition, not just based on um, what we see in the world, but what we see in the scriptures. <laughs> <laughs>